dangerous business. Going out of your MO comfort zone. You log in, and if you don't keep your feet, you don't know where you might be swept off to. Lord of the Rings Online was originally launched in April of 2007. Now, I originally played it in 2022. In this video, I'm going to talk about my impressions of this game, this older MMO, as a first time player in 2022. I'm going into this as a veteran of the MMO genre, but a newbie to this game. So I am going to miss things. There will be entire systems that I do not cover. This game is vast. It has a lot of content and I am not max level. This is simply a first impressions video. The same kind of first impressions that anyone going into the game new and fresh for the very first time in 2022 will also experience. And and I'm admitting this here in hopes that that maybe this will forestall or, or prevent some of the, the veterans of this MMO for coming for me. So so give me a little bit of leeway. If you've never played Lord of the Rings Online, this video is probably for you. And if you have played Lord of the Rings Online, please, please stay anyway. I, it, it might be interesting for you to see just how uh, different my experience is from yours. This is really what to expect in, in the first 30 hours or so of the MMO, both solo and grouping. So my initial impressions of the game is that it's both ugly and pretty. I don't really know how to explain it. The game that I kept thinking of was Valheim, which was beautiful and grotesque. For the age of the MMO, Lord of the Rings Online has held up well. You're taken through a series of solo quests, and early on, this is where the game shows its age. It wasn't until I broke out of the starter area where I started taking time to appreciate some of the graphical updates over the years. I mean, just look at the water reflection. Wait, this is bringing back a memory. A memory, a memory I had buried. Why do, why do I do these things? Going back to the game, Initially, the push to solo feels very strong. I started the game with several friends and we quickly realized we weren't going to be able to easily play together. We were separated, very separated. But not only that, you were starting with quest series that was instance off and you were really separated from the world itself in a lot of ways. So it was really telling you, hey, hold on, you're going to play this first part alone. So my initial MMO experience in Lord of the Rings Online started out more like Bilbo than Merry and Pippin. An adventure. No, I don't imagine anyone west of Bree would have much interest in adventures. I was initially unimpressed by the questing, UI, combat, really everything. Combat didn't feel very sticky early on, and it was insanely easy. But at least you could swim. Did I did I mention that already? You could swim. You can even you can even do a backstroke. As I continued my journey into the vast world of Tolkien that Standing Stone Games continues to curate, I found myself beginning to enjoy the game more and more. There was some things I didn't particularly enjoy, like AoE abilities being so present, making it clear that this game was taking the WoW route of caring more about cleaving through masses of mobs instead of focused on individual encounters like EverQuest. That preference for AoE seems to have leaked into their monetization as well because it felt like I was being attacked from every angle. Quests weren't all that different than what you'd expect. I don't think this game will win any awards for quest innovation. Why? Why do this? Why have static, non-responding quest clicks? Getting to 4 or 5? Easy as hell. Getting the final fifth little bastard? It's gone and f***ing yeeted itself to some other f***ing part of the world. Good luck. <clears throat> oh, yeah, and uh, spiders? They're still freaking creepy. <laughs> By the time I hit level 10, I was opened up to epic battles. My initial expectation was that I'd now be able to group. <laughs> Except, all my cues were solo. Aww. And while this would port you to a scenario, it was not randomized, making it hard to find people to group with. You could see occasionally different people opening up the group to different level ranges, none of which were available to me, and there weren't enough to really have much of an option. So solo it was. So I went to Helm's Dyke, alone. At level 10, it was epic and a bit scuffed, which I think sums up the game pretty well. I felt urgency, but things were just off. 
combat didn't feel very impactful, and as I tried my best to wail on enemies 90 levels higher than me with my wet noodle that had been upgraded by the game's boosting system to a handful of uncooked ramen, well, it didn't really do much. The worst part of this for me, though, was interacting with objectives and the sometimes buggy scripts that would pull you out of the game when you just saw NPCs standing there gawking at you, or you couldn't click the f***ing grappling hook because you couldn't get your f***ing cursor right in the right f***ing place. I'm not salty. I'm not salty at all. No. No, I'm not. After several not-so-glorious attempts at soloing some epic battles, I decided to take out my anger on the unsuspecting free peoples of Middle-earth and become a monster. Monster play was interesting, if overwhelming. This side of PvP in Lord of the Rings Online is essentially like creating a new character. In fact, you do create a new character, and it made me wish I could have been one from the start. Maybe I'm just kind of evil. I don't know. It was chaotic and I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I was able to hop into it and band together with some fellow evil friends and chow down on some man flesh. We're a few hours in in this point, and one of the things that's standing out in a good way is the music and atmosphere. I actually shifted and turned down the sound effects just so I could hear the music better. In many cases, it changes appropriately to be more dramatic or uplifting. Music is very important to me in games, and it's sadly often very lackluster in MMOs, or utilized poorly or sparingly. Take for example this shift in music from Buckland to the Old Forest. So off I go on my merry way, slaughtering wilderness beasts and just having generally a good time. The world is feeling massive. It's an exciting feeling knowing there are so many places to explore, and the game allows you to. Quests are all over the place and killing creatures alone feels rewarding for experience and deed completions. Speaking of deeds, I love this. Deeds are introduced very early and I appreciate how they encourage exploration, rewarding you if you stray a bit off the track laid out for you with the questing. I just wish they weren't so tied to Lord of the Rings online points. I was just loving, just wandering around and finding new and exciting things to kill me. Now combat felt a bit spammy, but power requirements kept that in check, or would if combat was difficult. At times it felt like there was a bit of a cliff. I'd either be infinitely powerful or I'd get my ass kicked and wish I had more potions. It was in the old forest that I realized two things. First, that I really felt very hemmed in for the first time. It felt more like a Diablo 3 map than the wide open spaces I'd experienced so far. And two, I was alone. I was so very alone. I had no friends, no Mary, no Pippin, no Gimli. No Legolas, Aragorn, certainly no Sam. It was a lonely experience. Playing through the playing through the game this way just felt wrong. Occasionally I'd see people walk by, but they'd be off on their own adventure. But wait. Could it be? My Merry and Pippin! Two of my friends joined me for further adventures. Now we first tried to do a properly tuned epic battle, as it was made for exactly three people. Now when I say made, there were only a handful of these, and they were tuned to a couple different ranges. You could pick one, two, three in some cases, six or 12 players. Now this severely limited our options of what we could actually do, and the one time we tried to queue up as a fellowship, which is, I believe consists of six players, and we only had three of those, well, it was disastrous. But we did get to experience some of what the game has to offer for grouping, or as they're called in the game, fellowships. We had our healer, our support DPS, and me spinning blades of death that test whether or not you can fall off of things. 
As epic and exciting as battles were, there are tuning issues. The battles without script NPC help felt more fun, specifically the Summer Festival. I felt like we had more autonomy, and we could do what we wanted to do. This felt more like a scripted dungeon in a game like World of Warcraft, whereas the epic battle to defend Minas Tirith was supposed to be a lot bigger and cooler, ended up with a lot of standing around and trying to click things that you couldn't really click, and NPCs being weird and just essentially kind of a strange experience. Combat got especially repetitive in this, as we just sat there and safely wailed on a boss. I mean, look at this. Look, look, I've even sped this footage up. This is this is a sped up version of what we did. I could have gone and gotten a drink. A few moments later. But at least we could do the objectives. Oh, cool, a giant freaking hook. At least I can click on this. More combat with the hook. 2,000 years later. The game rewards you for some scenes like the tower blowing up, but for the most part it's just a lot of running from one objective to the next and spamming your abilities until you run out of power and going and getting a diet sundaes from the fridge. The real fun I had with my fellowship actually came out in the world. Together we roamed about the countryside, slaughtering wildlife. An interesting note here, in the fellowship the quest range was vast and experience gained killing together was exactly the same as killing separate. This makes grouping up in a fellowship very beneficial and it's something I highly recommend. I just wish we could have started this way from the very beginning. Despite some of the occasional game breaking lag, likely caused by the ferociousness of Slash Dance 3, we were able to progress through quests quickly, working together. There were only a handful that had to be completed separately. This quest in particular reminded us all of just how frustrating inventory management is in this game, as all of us had to delete something from our inventory to be able to turn in. But no worries! You can buy 5 additional inventory slots for 325 coins. I understand the game's need for funding to continue development, and many of the issues I encounter are at least partially solved by paying for VIP, their subscription service, but when inventory management is so frustrating it makes you want to pay just to make it less aggravating, I get upset. I've never liked monetization options that are there to solve an issue created by the game, specifically to be an issue. And don't even get me started on putting writing behind the same paywall. And yes, you can point to the fact that you can get Lord of the Rings Online points by completing deeds, but with only 5-10 to 10 points per deed, you're putting a heavy influence on players to pay. I will say this though, at least this is happening early in the game, not after you've already invested hundreds of hours. They're being upfront with that if you are going to play this game as a free to play title, you are going to be incentivized to pay. My first impressions of Lord of the Rings Online can be summed up as follows. A scuffed World of Warcraft with amazing music, occasional beauty, an immense and overwhelming number of systems, a UI that badly needs to be revamped, a world that feels huge, and a gameplay loop that is serviceable if not magnificent. If you love Middle Earth, I think you have to at least give the game a try. If you're not that invested, there might be better games out there for you. Let me know, do you all want a part 2 of Lord of the Rings Online? Are there specific systems in the game that you would like me to test out and see how they play? Are there other MMOs that you'd like me to do first impressions on? Obviously I can't do a game like EverQuest because that'd be like the 33rd impression of that game. But let me know down in the comments below what games do you want a video like this on. I covered Lord of the Rings Online earlier this year in my hope for what would be the good things coming from MMOs in 2022. If you want to take a look at that video, it's right over here somewhere. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Redbeard Flynn, and I really look forward to seeing you again soon.